Just each page has four bytes of memory, and the first page always contains the UID. Um, if the, they are using the encryption, they are storing the 48-bit key in some of the first sectors, or they have a different mode where they only use a password that's also stored there. Um, the radio protocol that's described, this picture is actually from the data sheet, that's described in the data sheet is um, they claim the operating frequency is 100 to 150 kilohertz, where they are usually operating at 125 kilohertz. That's also what this reader uses. The data transmission from reader to tag is a simple on-off keying, 100% amplitude shift keying. And their uh, data format, their, their coding is full to length. That means they are switching off the field for short amounts of time. And the time between um, two, uh, two uh, field off states encodes the data. So this is a zero bit, this is another zero bit, that's a one bit, that's a one bit. What you can see here is that the one bits take longer than the zero bits. So the data rate is actually data dependent, which is kind of uh, crazy. The uh, transmission from tech to reader is uh, load modulation, as everybody uses. And uh, the high tech S data sheet specifies quite a lot of different modulation and coding schemes. They have three coding schemes and three different data rates. Uh, but since I haven't seen any of these tags, I'm not sure what they are actually using. The uh, data rate is 5.2 kilobits on average from reader to tag, and from tag to reader is uh, dependent on what you have configured. There are also a tag talks first mode, that's what they call them, where you can program the tag uh, with data content and set a configuration bytes so that they will uh, behave just as if they were stupid tags. Uh, we have seen some of these car keys uh, where the tag simply sends a continuous stream of data without any, uh, any transmission from the reader, only the field from the reader, and then it will start transmitting. That's also what some uh, access control cards use, for example, the NADAP card that I uh, demonstrated at a Congress several years ago. These are really easy to clone because you just need to record the signal and then can replay it with a simple circuit and uh, any audio source. I've used an iPod. And they have these modes in there for backwards compatibility if you have some of these old systems. Um, the data sheet specifies quite a lot of different commands, and the protocol seems to be organically grown. You have this uh, UID request command, which is five bits. Uh, the high tech S actually has an anti collision procedure where the high tech 2 doesn't. And uh, I really like, I really like uh, their, their select procedure. They have one select command, that is basically the command and the UID of the card you want to select. And they have a select but go to quiet mode command. That's the same command, but with one additional zero bit inserted. So it's uh, not byte aligned or anything organically grown. Their authentication in high tech S is similar to what we are seeing in, sh in a short moment in Honda on high tech 2. The reader sends a 32 bit random number, a nonce, and calculates based on this random number the UID of the tag and its secret key an authentication token that's uh, transmitting after the nonce, after which the tag will uh, use the uh, cipher state and respond with its password in encrypted form. What you can see here especially is that there is no randomness supplied by the tag, so you can reply that, uh, replay that easily. Yeah, high tag 2, which is uh, what uh, we've looked at, is only available in 256 bit of memory, which means uh, there's eight pages of four byte each. Uh, the first page again stores the UID. Page uh, three has configuration and uh, tag password. And the last four pages are freely configurable for user data. And the remaining pages are store storing a secret data, which is either the key or the password. Um, through the configuration, you can again select one of two different modulation schemes, bypass or Manchester. 
they are set to Manchester by default, and that's what I'm using. They have uh, two Tech Talks first mode for emulating older tags, which are listed here, so that you can upgrade your system or just buy their tags instead of the older ones. And the most interesting part is whether you have crypto or password mode. There's one bit that selects the mode. They are in password mode by default, and uh, we'll go to, uh, you can set the bit and then it's in crypto mode. In password mode, they have a cute uh, thing that's more like mutual authentication. Uh, they do that uh, by the reader ha sending one password. The reader sends a four byte password, and the tag responds with a three byte password. So they are mutually authenticated, kind of. It's obviously uh, easy to sniff and uh, emulate and replay, uh, replayable. There's also the other mode, the crypto mode, where they use the protocol I explained before. The reader sends a 32-bit nonce, and immediately after that, a 32-bit authentication token, to which the tag responds with its uh, configuration and uh, its own password. So the tag doesn't uh, do authentication through uh, challenge response, but just by responding with its password in encrypted form. And there is no randomness from the tag involved at all. All further communication after that is encrypted, which is different from high tech S. In high tech S, only the authentication is encrypted, and afterwards, everything is in, clear, in the clear again. The activation procedure, this is uh, information I uh, reverse engineered by sniffing the protocol. I will show you that in a moment. The activation procedure is again a five bit command to get the UID, then the tag responds with its UID, which is simply sending out the contents of page zero. Then the reader responds with its reader password, which are the contents of page one, and the tag responds with its uh, configuration and tag passwords, which are the contents of page three. In crypto mode, starts with the same five bit command, so you, uh, and the, again, transmits the UID, so you have to, if you are the reader, you have to know whether the tag is in crypto or password mode, otherwise you can't do that properly. And then the reader transmits its uh, random number and uh, authentication token to which the tag responds by encrypted configuration and password. Afterwards, all further communication is encrypted through the cipher stream. Yeah, their read commands are, again, not byte-aligned or anything. It's just three, uh, two-bit command, three-bit page number, and then the same but inverted two-bit command, three-bit page number. That's the read command. The write command is similar but with a different command code. And for write, uh, the tag uh, replays the, uh, repeats the command code in order to confirm that it's really able to write and willing to accept the data, and after what the reader sends its content that it wants to write. <coughs> Sniffing, that's uh, what we did uh, right at the beginning. As I said, they are using a 125 kilohertz carrier, and they have a, a rather low data rate, which means that the maximal frequency uh, that's used in the modulation is 16 kilohertz, which is well within the audio range and well within the capabilities of any sound card. So I can use a simple diode detector radio, that's uh, what they used in the 20s or last century for, for simple, simple, uh, very simple radio, type of radio that you can use to receive amplitude modulated